product photography. We regularly get messages asking us about our product photography and tips and tricks and the equipment that we use. So we thought we would put together a video going through some of the things we've learned over the years. Now, I am not a professional photographer, but I definitely have learned a thing or two running a maker business and knowing how important great product photography is. We know that a lot of the channels that we sell through, customers don't get to touch and feel and see our products in person. So our product photography needs to tell that story and show all of the features and the reason why that customer should purchase our product. Now, you don't need to be a professional photographer to take great product photos. When we started my Clayco, we definitely didn't do it on a big budget. And I will tell you now, the way that we take photos now is not that different from the way that we took photos when we first started. So if you are looking for a way to take great photos, but in a DIY way on a budget, this is the video for you. So today we're gonna to be having a little look at the lighting that we use, the hardware, the way we edit our photos, as well as how we style them. So first up, lighting, lighting. Now over the years, we have tried rigging up many different light setups. And do you know what I have learned from all of these? That natural light is king. And do you know what's great about that? It's free. So we are very lucky here at the My Clayco studio. We have a dedicated photography space and a big old giant window so that we can take some beautiful photos using that natural light. But I will let you in on a little secret. The first couple of years running with My Clayco, we took almost all of our product photos on the floor in my hallway in front of these glass sliding doors that I had. So you don't have to have a dedicated photography space, just wherever you are, find the best natural light that you can and set up your setup there. When people see your product photos, they're not gonna see what you see. They're not gonna know where you've taken these photos. They're just gonna be seeing your product. So you need to make sure that they shine using that natural light. So we've got your lighting sorted, let's talk hardware. Now, the obvious thing that you're going to need is a camera. And unfortunately for a lot of us maker and handmade businesses, we don't have that big budget so that we can buy a fancy camera. But the great thing is almost all of us have a mobile phone that we can use. Now, now we do all of our product photography on iPhones here, and there are a couple of little things that I want to point out with them. So if you are using an iPhone, one of the things is to make sure that you are using the normal camera on there. If you do use the selfie camera, or if you zoom in, you will find that the quality of your photos does decrease. So try and avoid those options. Another thing that you can do is also edit your photos on the iPhone. Now, because we've used that beautiful natural light, there really isn't that much editing that we need to do, but I will say that most of the time I do still increase the brightness just a little bit. Now, I'm gonna show you a quick little hack that you can do with your iPhone so that you can edit all of your photos at the same time, because I know sometimes this can be a time consuming process and we've got making to do. So what you can do is get out your phone, you can edit one of your photos. So let's increase the brightness here to 30. And then what we're gonna do is pop up to the top corner here and go copy edits. And then we're gonna select all of the photos that we've got. And then we're just gonna go paste edits. And as you see, that is then going to paste the same edit that you've made on that first photo across all of your photos. This hack will save you so much time. It is definitely a keeper. Now, one last thing I will say about using your iPhone is make sure that you've got the flash off. If you do use the flash, you will find that it overexposes your photos and sometimes it can also drop shadows where you don't want them to be. Now, speaking of shadows, the other thing that we're gonna have a look at is these reflectors. So these are a super easy way to make sure that you don't have shadows where you don't want them to be. Sometimes if you have shadows in there, they can distract from your actual product and people don't know where the product starts and ends because those shadows are so deep on there. So we got these from Amazon. They basically just help to reflect the light so that you're not ending up with these giant shadows in your product photos. You can also DIY this. So if you just wanted to get a piece of cardboard and put some alfoil on there, uh, that will also work in the same way. Now, these are double-sided, so they do have the black on the back and the black side can actually help you create deeper shadows. 
Now, we find with our aesthetic and our product photography, we don't have the need to create deeper shadows, but I mean, if you had some kind of Halloween collection or something, that, that might work for you. Now, the last bit of hardware I wanna talk about is the tripod. So obviously, I don't have the budget to have a cameraman here, so I have a tripod holding my phone today. Tripods are great because they will give you a nice consistency across all of your photos, and it also means that you have that sturdiness, so your camera's not gonna be wobbling all over the place, and you're not gonna be at risk of having these out of focus photos. So I definitely recommend getting yourself a tripod. It made our product photography a lot easier and a lot more consistent. So our next step is styling, and one of the most important parts of this is the background that we're using. Now, when you're selecting your background, you wanna pick something that's gonna stay in line with your brand, but also isn't going to distract from your actual product. So I've got a few examples of the different backgrounds that we use here. We use these bigger backdrops all of the time. We find that their size means that they're really versatile. So we can take lots of different angles from the side, or we can do one above like a flat lay. These were quite inexpensive. I think they're about $10 each, but you do get a backdrop on either side. Now, I really love the marble and the wooden ones because I find that they're great at giving you a nice basic background without distracting from your products. The other thing that I love about them is you can use them as a sweep. Now, if you're not sure what a sweep is, I'm going to give you a little look at that now. And essentially, it means that you can have this one long continuous background that you're taking your photos on. So if you're opting for something that isn't a flat lay, something from a different angle, it would just mean that you don't get things that you don't want in the background of your photos and your focus will stay on the product that you're actually photographing. Now, we do also use these backgrounds a lot. Now, these ones aren't huge, but they're definitely big enough if you're taking photos of small products. If you have a handmade or a make a business where you're showing off smaller pieces, these could be a really great option for you. These are from Kaiser Craft, and I actually think that they are normally used for scrapbooking, but these scrapbooking papers give you a fantastic range for your product photos. So as you can see here, we have a whole heap of different ones and they've all got different themes. They were again, quite inexpensive. I think they're about $20, $25 for the whole pad of these. And you obviously do get quite a few backdrops in there. So they also work out to be really great value. We also do use these Kmart ones from time to time. I do find them a bit restrictive though. I mean, they were quite cheap. I think it was $5 for the pad of these, but I do find that they are a little bit too small to get different angles. If you're just doing a flat lay of some earrings, then they work quite well, but otherwise I tend to stick to the bigger sizes. Now, there are apps out there that will put fake backgrounds in your photos for you. So essentially you just take your product photo on whatever kind of background, and then you can select the background that you put in there. I'm personally not a big fan of these because I find a lot of the time you can tell that somebody has used an app. Um, and I think it's mainly because the background probably has different lighting to the product that you've taken the photo of. And I do feel that it can kind of make your customer lose trust with you because if they pick up on it, they might be thinking then, well, what else is not real about this photo? But I do have this hack that you can use if you do wanna use those digital kind of backgrounds and give yourself a bit more range with the backgrounds. Now, one thing you do need to be aware of is making sure that you know what the license is on the picture that you're using as a background. So you either need to look at purchasing it from the artist that's taken that photo or drawn that back backdrop, or alternatively, you can look at pictures that have a free commercial license. Now, an important thing to remember is not to overstyle your photos. Remember, the main feature is the actual product that you're trying to sell. So you don't wanna have all these crazy backgrounds. You don't wanna to have too many crazy props that are gonna distract away from your actual product. So most of the time when we are photographing our products, we like to use a plain background, but we will quite often put some kind of small prop up the top just to frame the photo a little bit. Now, you don't want that prop to be the main focus. You wanna make sure that your main focus is still the thing that you're taking the photo of. Now, when you are setting up your photos, you wanna make sure that your product is positioned nicely. So what I mean by this is, for example, if you're taking a picture of earrings, don't just you know throw them down on your background with the hooks all over the place. 
you want to make sure they're laying in a way that is presentable. The other thing I would say is important is making sure that you've got your photos in a way that you can take them from different angles that show off the features of your product. And this might mean that when you're taking your photos, you do move your product around a little bit so you can get some different angles and show off all of those features. A lot of the time when I am taking pictures of the earrings that we make, I not only do a flat lay of them, I also take a side angle and I also like to hold them in my hand so I can give the customer a reference of how big these earrings actually are. Showing off the multiple angles of your products, the different features and the size reference will help you sell your product because customers will understand what the features and the product is all about. Remember, they can't look or feel or see these products in person, so you need to make sure that they understand exactly what your product is about. Now, I'm just gonna run you through a couple of different style examples. So if we have a look at this one here, we can see that it's very busy and it's really hard for us to concentrate on the actual earrings that we're showing here. I don't know what I was thinking that day. <laughs> but then we've got this one here that's a nice, clean, crisp image. It's got that basic background and we've just got a little bit in the corner for styling. So this is more the look that you want when you're taking your product photos because as you can see, the main thing that we're looking at is the actual product there. There's nothing else in the photo there that's gonna distract away from that product. Now, I am gonna show you a trick if you do have a background that's a bit busier that you do wanna use because whatever the reason it fits in with your aesthetic or it ties in with the theme of your piece that you're trying to show off. So what you can do in this instance, you can get these foam beds and they come in lots of different colors. They are great for just elevating your product a little bit beyond the background and also giving them that plain background to actually sit on. So again, they end up being the feature of the photo. If you were going to put these earrings on this background, you will find that they would get completely lost in there. So it is important to make sure that you're doing something to break it up if you do want to use a busier background. I hope you found this video helpful today. As makers, I know that we spend so much time creating our products so it's also important that we put some effort into our product photography to make sure our customers can see just how great they are. If you have found this video helpful, we'd love you to like and subscribe and we look forward to seeing you next time.